we need to talk about the Batman. Friends, uh, Matt Reeves has done the impossible here. Like, just think of how insane it is for a filmmaker to say, oh yeah, you know, Tim Burton did this, Joel Schumacher did this, Christopher Nolan did this, Zack Snyder. Hey, it's my turn. It's my turn to take on the Batman. Cause I'm so fucking good! And not to mention all the animated features, the comics, all these crazy, amazing iterations of Batman. And Matt Reeves had the balls to say, yeah, I, I, I can do this. I can do this better. And you know what? The son of a bitch, he did it. This movie fucking rocks. And so I want to talk about this as a filmmaker, as clearly a fan of movies. Why is this movie so damn good? Let's start with casting. Look, Robert Pattinson has been absolutely killing it. You know, you know, he was good even in Twilight. I don't know why everybody likes to hate on Robert Pattinson, but this guy's been a talented actor ever since he graced the screen and even Harry Potter. If you haven't seen movies like Good Time or Cosmopolis, this guy just knows how to act, the way he can embody a character is second to none. His character in The King is one of my favorite performances of the last like five, six years. He absolutely destroys that performance. You wonder why I have come. But all that to say, Robert Pattinson is super talented. So as Batman, of course, he brings it. This is one of the best Batmans we have ever seen on screen. Who's the mustache with the broken nose? The presence, the way he uses his eyes, the way he can emote just by looking at somebody. We really haven't seen that with Batman before. At a base level, this is the Batman. He definitely earns the title of the before Batman. He just absolutely brings it. Now a leading star performance is usually only as good as its supporting cast too. And we're talking Jeffrey Wright, Zoe Kravitz, Peter Skarsgård. Colin Farrell as the Penguin is absolutely magnificent in this film to an extent where I think he actually steals most of the scenes he's in. On top of that, just to rewind a little bit, Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon, bravo. Absolutely stellar casting choice. This is probably my favorite Gordon that's ever been on screen. Gordon actually has a role within the plot of this film. He actually does things. He is essentially a partner to Bruce Wayne and Batman. He is the guy that's the detective partner. He's helping solve cases. He's just not a passive player in the story. He actually has a role to fill. And speaking of roles to fill, Andy Serkis is Alfred following on the heels of people like Jeremy Irons and Michael Caine. Huge shoes to fill here. You think Batman's big shoes to fill? Alfred is a really integral character within this story, and on top of that, the way Andy Serkis plays this character as a somewhat younger Alfred, of course Batman is also younger too in this film, and the dynamics between the two of them, and I won't get into spoilers, but the sort of father-son, like kind of complicated relationship that is explored here. All I'll say is their relationship in this film, I bawled my eyes out in the theater. I think they were absolutely wonderful together and the writing of those two characters in this film is absolutely stellar. While we're on the subject of cast, I want to talk about the music because the music in this film is a character and actor all in itself. Michael Giacchino, this is the work of his career. I feel like everybody in this film is just operating at the top level of their game, but Michael Giacchino, of, out of everybody that's worked on this film, literally brought their A-game to this because this score is absolutely magnificent. Again, talking about shoes to fill, Hans Zimmer, Danny Elfman, the stuff that Michael has done with this score is stellar. There is one cue I just wanna play really quickly and I hope I don't get copyright for it. And it's during a scene within this film that like I was literally almost borderline crying of how freaking amazing it was to watch. But this particular cue in this film might be the best Batman cue of all time. Music is just so important in a film, and particularly in a movie like Batman, where we have such iconic themes. The idea that you could bring something new to this and a feeling and a tone to the film that feels completely different, yet familiar to the genre and familiar to the Batman stuff too, is just, my God, I hope that the Academy and everyone remembers this stuff come next Oscar season, because I hope that he gets recognized for the score. This is a score that I will be listening to for years and months and days, just nonstop. Thing is like Hans Zimmer, everyone likes that Dark Knight score and it is good, but what I've always found is it doesn't really work in isolation from the film. Like it really only works in conjunction with the images. Whereas this Michael Giacchino score, like I swear, I've just been listening to it like I'm listening to regular music. Zoe Kravitz kills it as Catwoman and Catwoman herself literally 
literally has her own little subplot within the movie that actually makes sense. It's not shoehorned in. I was never a big fan of Anne Hathaway's Catwoman in the Nolan films. I just kind of felt like we have Catwoman now and she's sort of here, but never really had a great arc and there wasn't really much to that character. Whereas in this film, Catwoman is just as important as Batman. I think that's a really refreshing take for this series. I think Zoe Kravitz is a wonderful actress. If you haven't seen Kimmy, the Steven Soderbergh film, I would definitely recommend checking that out as well. She was so good, I'd be 100% down to see a standalone Catwoman film with Zoe Kravitz, which is saying a lot because we had that Halle Berry film and we're not talking about that one much anymore, are we? <laughs> And then we have Paul Dano as the Riddler, who, you know, there was some skepticism from people, and you know, you can go back to even Heath Ledger having skepticism, but these guys know what they're doing. These filmmakers know what they're doing when it comes to casting, and of course, Paul Dano is stellar in this. I think he absolutely crushed it and was a worthy adversary, not only as a character within the film, but as an actor opposite Robert Pattinson, which is almost just as important as the writing of the film itself. You kind of have to have these guys going toe to toe at times within scenes, and their scenes together are some of the highlights of this entire movie. In terms of the tone of this film and the aesthetic, they are drawing on so many different references within this. And this is something I want to talk about as a filmmaker and a creator, which I think is the most interesting aspect of this film as a whole. I think a lot of filmmakers and directors and writers, like a lot of us are afraid of existing IP or ideas that already exist or even themes and styles that are already out in the world. Cause it's like, oh, that's been done. I can't really put my twist on it. I can't really do anything new here. Whereas Matt Reeves looked at Batman as a whole, the comic book genre as a whole and said, what if we take elements from thrillers? What if we take elements from horror movies? What if we take elements of 70s crime noir films? Like, what if we take all of that and sort of Frankenstein everything together and blend it into something entirely new that feels fresh and original? And that to me is what the Batman is. It takes all the best parts of so many other genres of films and creates something entirely new. But it's not like he reinvents the wheel. He's not inventing something entirely new. He's just taking things and remixing it to create something new. And that's something we as filmmakers like should be doing all the time. Like we are musicians to an extent where the chords are all out there, C, D, G, E, all that stuff exists for us to play with and string together in new ways for us to have fun and experiment. And that's why this movie really inspires me as a filmmaker and creator because I can look at all those same references that I absolutely love and apply them to my storytelling and the things that I wanna do and not be afraid of copying or you know plagiarizing or mimicking or paying homage even. The idea is that you're taking all the things that you love and creating something original just by the act of doing it. The fact that you're putting your spin and your personal touch onto the things that you enjoy and you grab from, that's a really wonderful way to create films. I'm probably gonna do an entire video dedicated specifically on the cinematography of this film with Greg Frazier because it is operating on a level. I really think there's like before the Batman and after the Batman when it comes to cinematography. I truly believe this is like a vibe shift level cataclysmic event for cinematography with this film because it's totally gonna change the way filmmakers approach comic book films, blockbuster films in general, to go at it from this world of not trying to make everything look clean and pristine and perfect and saying, look, things can be out of focus, things can be gritty, things can be grainy. That to me was such a brilliant and beautiful decision by the team here. And look, Greg Frazier is an unreal cinematographer. The guy's just batting it out of the field at this point because he just did Dune. He, he did Let Me In with Matt Reeves way back in the day and they've known each other since. And so this guy is just crushing it. And this, I'm telling you, this film puts him up there with like a Darius Kanji who shot Seven. Like the way this film looks, we just really haven't seen a film that looked as good as Seven, particularly on digital until this movie. And the reason I wanna do a whole dedicated video on this is because it's just, I could dive into their usage of light, the way he paints with light, the anamorphic lenses that they use. And I've also heard that they use the Alexa Mini LF, but then they put the actual digital images onto 35 millimeter film twice. They actually did the grade and then put it onto film. So if you told me going to this film, this thing was shot on film, I would never have questioned you a single second. In fact, I actually thought it was shot on film before I went to see it. So while I'm watching on the screen, I'm like, oh God, this film looks so damn good. Like I'm looking at things thinking, oh wow, this looks good because it's film. Like I was conscious of that. And then I found out after it was shot on the mini LF. And I was like, oh my God, like whatever expectation you had that film was better than digital, this movie just literally will shoot that to shit. So look, overall, I absolutely love this film. I'm definitely gonna see it a few more times in theaters. I cannot wait for the movie to come out on digital because I would love to get more reference images to show you guys the cinematography and apply some of that stuff to how we can create things and images that look similar to this movie. I just really think it's like a cataclysmic shift in how movies will be shot after the Batman exists now. That to me is such, 
I can't think of another movie that's happened recently that has that sort of like effect on filmmakers, but I can definitely feel it within the world that we're all watching it going, oh damn, there's a there's a shift happening. There's a change happening here. I gotta I gotta step my game up now because this this the look of this film is just absolutely breathtaking and gorgeous. And Matt Reeves, you just gotta hand it to him for sticking to a very clear and concise vision that pays homage and you know gives you the reference to the things that we all like, and including previous Batman works, but really does his own wholly original thing with it. As a filmmaker, you really just gotta be excited, and as an audience member, sit back and enjoy the ride. I really hope he makes more of these films, but otherwise, Batman, 10 out of 10 for me, clearly. Uh, if anything changes, I'll probably let you guys know. If you want me to do more movie reviews, please let me know. This is the first time I've ever done a movie review on the channel, so this could be a fun new little series. Uh, I, at some point I would love to do like a movie review and then kind of incorporate the elements of the film itself and like how we can do things within the movie ourselves, like how to recreate things or how to light like this, what lenses they used. Right now there's just not a lot of footage from the Batman that I can pull from to do a proper video like that, but I'll see what I can experiment with. Otherwise, my name is Patrick Damaso. I hope you liked this video and uh, we'll see you real soon on Vengeance. Oh.